implants, and so forth. And you notice I haven't said anything about biology. Those folks didn't really need to be educated in genetics, biochemistry, molecular biology, cell biology to solve those problems. And that's because uh, biology as it used to be was not a science that engineers could address very well. Because in order for engineers to really analyze, study, quantitatively develop models, and to build technologies, alter the parts, there's a lot of requirements on the science that really biology didn't satisfy. Uh, the, the actual mechanisms of function weren't understood. Yes, you could see that moving your arm required a certain force and uh, would bear a certain load, but you really didn't know what was going on down in the proteins and cells and tissues of the muscles and the bones. Okay, But still you could design maybe an artificial bone uh, to do this, uh, an implant. You didn't really know the molecular components, so how in the world could you actually manipulate the system if you didn't even know what the molecules were that are really underlying this? Okay? You couldn't really do the chemistry on the biological molecules. Uh, it's very hard to quantify, since if you didn't even know the parts and the mechanisms, how could you get quantitative measurements for them, develop models? So there's good reason why there never really was a biological engineering until very recently, because biology wasn't a science that was really suited for engineering analysis and engineering synthesis. And so therefore the world of biomedical engineering mainly involved all these application problems that I've just talked about that didn't necessarily require biology per se. But that's changed, okay? The good news for you folks is biology has changed. It's now a science that engineers can in fact connect to very well. 